Cool. Well, hi, my name is Ian. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about a bundler option that was added uh, to the module resolution mode uh, in TypeScript 5.0. So to start off, like, what is module resolution? Uh, say you have an import like this. You're importing foo from foobar. TypeScript needs to know the type of foo so that it can check that you're using it correctly. And in order for it to know what foo is or what its type is, importantly, it's not, it's not about the, the running of it or the bundling or any of that. It's just what are the types of foo. Uh, it needs to know like, where to find foobar. And depending on the module system you're using, that could be in several different places. And so the module resolution setting for TypeScript tells it the rules that it needs to use in order to look for foobar to find the types. Uh, and there is a talk called a horrifically, a horrifically Deep Dive into Module Resolution uh, that you can check out that goes into a lot more detail about all of uh, how module resolution works. But today we're going to talk about what was added in TypeScript 5.0, which is a bundler option. And this was added to support bundlers, obviously, right? But like most bundlers are kind of node-like. And up until this was released, Many people who were building applications would use the node module resolution setting because most bundlers like Webpack and Vite, like they'll use the same rules that Node used. Uh, and, and this new bundler option solved a lot of the challenges that existed when you were using that node option uh, or you were trying to use the newer Node 16. Like that came with its own pitfalls. Uh, and so this was kind of a, a uh, amalgamation of the two and solved a lot of the challenges. We'll talk about the features of it in just a minute. Um, one thing to note is it really is for people who are using a bundler, so Webpack, V, Parcel, Rollup, something like that, uh, or if you're shipping code directly to Bun, right? So Bun is a runtime. It's sort of similar to, to Deno and, and Node, uh, but it's, uh, it, it works a little differently. It kind of behaves a little bit like a bundler. Uh, and so if you're writing code that's going to get shipped straight to Bun, uh, you can use this, this bundler option. So some of the features of this bundler mode. Uh, the main thing is it allows you to use ESM and some of the modern Node.js features like uh, package.json imports and exports conditions. If you try to do that with uh, Node, version, it's just unsupported. Like That does not work. It won't find your modules. You'll get errors. If you try to use Node 16, uh, it'll work. It works pretty well in CJS and CommonJS. For ESM, uh, there's some limitations in actual you know, in Node's runtime of ESM. Uh, for instance, you cannot use, uh, you, know, ex you, you can't import something without an extension. You always have to put the extension. You can't use index.js files anymore as like you know exporting things from the package. Uh, there's some there's some problems there. So so sort of converting all of your the way that you write your code, even though like your bundler might support those things, but just having to change them to support TypeScript was annoying. And so that's why they added this bundler, uh, and it supports all those different features. Uh, additionally, if you are using extensions in your TypeScript imports. Uh, it can be a little bit confusing because TypeScript, if you're using TypeScript as your compiler and you're using it to create your JavaScript, right, if you're using TSC to compile your code, it will not change your import statements. So if you, you know, import foo from foo.ts, like that is what's going to end up in your JavaScript code and there is no .ts once you've converted it all into JavaScript, it's all going to be .js. So you have to write even when you're writing TypeScript, you write import foo from foo.js, which is weird because that file doesn't exist at the point that you're authoring it, right? So that was a little bit confusing. And especially if you're using a bundler, like, you know, there is maybe not even a .js file going to ever be created, right? Because you're sort of, your bundler is, is packaging it all up. Uh, and so in certain circumstances, uh, if you, so if you're not emitting JavaScript with TSC, uh, you can, turn on a flag, which I'll talk about in the next video, so that you can import from uh, .ts files. Uh, there are some restrictions if you're using the bundler mode. You cannot 
use the require syntax. Uh, if you do import foo equals require dot foo or whatever, uh, that will fail. It'll be a syntax error in TypeScript. Uh, if you're using it in JavaScript, it won't error, but it'll just give you any back as the types no matter what. Are there any questions? Yeah, Eric. If we are using Vite today, Vite, should we switch our TS config to be bundler? I would recommend it, yeah. Because if you don't, if, if, if it's set to node right now, which it probably is, uh, you will not be able to import uh, types that are, like if you have a dependency that you're using that is using an exports map, and it's you know exporting different types for CJS versus ESM or something like that, uh, if you're using Node, it won't understand any of that, right? So you won't get those types. Um, and then, and then, uh, yeah. One thing to note, like when you see Node as the uh, as the module resolution, that really you, you can change it in your mind to say Node 10. Like that was the features that Node 10 supported. Uh, Node 16 or Node Next is like Node 12 and beyond. Once they added ESM support, I don't know why they didn't call it Node. 12 instead of node 16, but it means node 12 and above. I know my ESLint says already not to use the var requires. Do you know, what is the reason why they were already saying not to do that? And now, like, I, I see now it's not even possible to use in this bundler. Right, they, like, import equals require thing. Or, or like, like, var my thing I need equals require. Do you know why they were already saying generally don't use that? Is it just like an anti-pattern now? I, I think that the ESLint rule, if I recall correctly, uh, was against like dynamic imports using a require. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason for that is that like you can just have errors, right? Like if you're, if you're making it dynamic, the file you know might not be there or it just can't like statically analyze it to make sure that it's going to always work. Um, I think that was the rationale behind that rule. And I think it was... It was even before any of this. It was just kind of like, right. don't do dynamic imports. Uh, try to always, you know, have a, a uh, string literal when you're using a requires. And I think it's kind of good uh, practice for import, like dynamic imports as well, to try to make that all static, and then and then everything can analyze it properly. Gotcha.